So, yeah, here we go again. Here's another rant video, and this time, look at this. We're in another room. Look at all of this fancy stone stuff around me. Isn't, isn't that real fancy? Now, yeah, we're going to talk about the Skulk Sensor. You also might notice, oh my god, Crafty, why is this video so short? And that's because I honestly have no idea how we got this short. I guess there's just not that much to talk about the Skulk Sensor right now. But do expect a part two to this video when the Skulk Sensor does eventually come out in a snapshot. And before we start the video, I'm going to plug my Discord server. Join the Discord server. Almost at 500 members. There's like 3,000 of you subscribed to me. So, uh, yeah, get that server to 500 members. Link in the description. And also other links that I mentioned will also be in the description later on in the video. So, without further ado, let's just start the Skulk Sensor rant. And I'm totally not panning out watch time right now. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Minecraft Live announced the next major Minecraft update, 1.17 The Caves and Cliffs update, which you've probably all known about already. The update promises to bring many new exciting features to caves and mountains, and will probably change the way Minecraft worlds are generated forever. We also got our first look into new mobs including the Warden and Axolotl, new blocks like Copper and Amethyst, and cave biomes like the Lush Caves and the Deep Dark. In today's video, we'll be focusing on one feature, one block in particular, that has really split the community. Some people think it'll revolutionize redstone, while others think it won't really change anything at all. Of course, I'm talking about the latest redstone feature, the Skulk Sensor. Again, many of you watching probably already know what the Skulk Sensor is and what it does, but I'll still explain its mechanics and use Upasex Skulk Sensor mod for demonstrations, which is linked in the description. The Skulk Sensor can be found in the Deep Dark Cave biome along with other Skulk blocks and the Warden. We still do not know if it's renewable or if it'll have a crafting recipe, but it'll most likely have both of those things. It will also be the newest redstone block outputting a 2 second pulse whenever it detects vibrations. Wait, what are vibrations? Vibrations will now be created whenever a sound is played. This includes player sounds like walking and placing blocks, projectiles like arrows and snowballs, and blocks that make sound like pistons, note blocks, and droppers. However, the skulk sensor will not be affected by ambient weather like rain and thunder. The skulk sensor can detect these vibrations 5 blocks away, meaning its range is a sphere with a 6 block radius. There's also ways to expand the range of the skulk sensor using blocks that make noise being near the sensor. The flexibility can be from 16 to 64 blocks. You can use wool to block vibrations from being detected, which can be used to avoid clocks and direct inputs to specific places. The speed of the vibrations is roughly one block every two game ticks, or one block every redstone tick. And lastly, the skulk sensor has a six game tick cooldown when it deact- oh, breaking news! Apparently the skulk sensor will be completely different now. Oh, you can't expand the range? I think you can see the problem with skulk sensors now. When these blocks first got announced in the Minecraft livestream, people were obviously hyped as well as excited for, you know, the entire cave update. But the problem with the skulk sensors right now is that people genuinely don't have any idea what they're hyped for. Heck, I don't even know what I'm hyped for. Let's take the very few things we do know are confirmed and roll with those. We have a block that can detect some specific sound events and emit a redstone signal. And these can also be chained to make some sort of wireless redstone system. But what will this exactly change? The first part is obvious, we have a new input mechanic, but that's all it really is, an input. We still have no idea if it's reliable or what activates it, and we don't know what other blocks can trigger it or if blocks can trigger it at all. The second part, wireless redstone. This is the first legit way I can think of where we have wireless redstone that doesn't use a bug or exploit, so it's future proof. But like I said earlier, the vibrations only travel one block every redstone tick, so it's just as fast as a repeater or an observer chain. And there are lots of ways to transport redstone signals very far, very quickly. We already have ways to make insta-wire in every single possible direction, so why exactly do we need another way to transport redstone signals? The skulk sensor as it is right now is pretty pointless and won't change much of the current redstone. Let's take the last redstone feature we got, the target block, and compare how useful it is to the skulk sensor. The thing that makes a redstone component useful is the player quickly being able to know what it does and its functions being simple yet very powerful in lots of situations. On Java, the target block is the only solid block right now that can redirect redstone dust, which is an extremely useful feature. It also introduces a new input method, projectiles, which, unlike the skulk sensor, is easy to tell what will activate the target. On Bedrock, the target block is even more powerful when combined with pistons and tridents, making piston extenders extremely easy to make with this trick. 
So knowing what we know about the target block, how can we make the skulk sensor better? I think there are two major things that Mojang could do to make the skulk sensor better and more useful. The first one being knowing what the heck the skulk sensor is. The players don't know how it works and not even Mojang fully understand what they're creating. All we can really do as a player base is wait and see the details the devs will release later on. You see, unlike the target block, the skulk sensor is really vague and we don't really know what the term vibration really means. While the target block, we understood that projectiles activated things like snowballs, fishing rods, bows and arrows, tridents, and all of those things, so that was fairly easy to narrow down. But they did try to narrow down what the definition of vibration was in this tweet by King B Dogs, where he says that the term vibrations wasn't the best way to describe the skulk sensor, since, you know, in the real world, every sound makes a vibration. He says that the skulk sensor will react more to movement-based sounds, giving the example of a bat saying it would detect the flap of its wings rather than its idle noise. They could possibly narrow down the sounds even more by giving the player the option to decide what sounds the skulk will react to sort of like taming the skulk sensor. This suggestion is very popular, and it's probably the most popular one regarding the skulk sensor, and can make it a bit more useful in practical redstone builds. So anyway, that's really it. I know this rant video was really short, but I just want to give my opinion before this video ends. So what do I think about the skulk sensor? Right now, I don't know whether to be excited or not, since we know, like, nothing about it. We don't know what activates it, it keeps changing every week, so until Mojang releases an official snapshot, then I'll give my proper opinion then. So, who knows, maybe you'll see a Skulk Rant Part 2. But now, I'm gonna ask you guys the question, are you excited about it? Do you need a bit more information? Like with all these rant videos, I want you guys to comment what you think about the subject matter, since you know that's the whole point, to put an opinion on the table and spark a discussion. Anyway, that was my rant on the Skulk Sensor. If you guys want me to make more of these rants, tell me what I should make. I don't know, what do I talk about? And maybe, I don't know, do the, do the funny subscribe button thing. I'm doing the funny YouTuber thing where I ask you to subscribe. And maybe you can see more of these rant videos in the future. So, anyways, this has been another rant video again. It's a lot shorter than my usual ones, but yeah, whatever. Goodbye.